Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! This effect was created using After Effects and C4D Lite. C4D Lite comes with After Effects, so if you are new to 3D, this tutorial is the right place to start. Trim your video to how you want it. Make sure the start frame reads as frame number one, or else this is gonna cause issues with Cinema 4D later on. Beep, beep, beep. That's my warning. That was an issue. Yeah, it was an issue. All right, let's, so let's go ahead and uh, to avoid that, yeah. let's hit Control K to call up the comp settings, and we can adjust it. Before we actually start the tracking, we can help the 3D tracker by adding an adjustment layer with a curves effect to bump up the contrast and a sharpen effect to bring out a little extra detail. This won't necessarily look pretty, but it's only temporary. It's going to help our camera tracker plugin make more sense of the geometry and come up with more tracking points. You know, we're actually going to have to pre-compose that layer or else the camera tracker is just going to ignore those effects. Let's go ahead and pre-compose that. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, let's pre-comp the layer and the adjustment layer together. Cool. Tell us more stuff. Apply the camera tracker effect. It may help to toggle the detailed analysis switch. We did also throw some random objects onto the ground as tracking markers like that thing and that thing. Once your tracking is done, move through your timeline and delete the tracking points on your subject. These might cause issues down the line since your actor is probably moving around on their own. If they're not, they're not a very good actor. Yes. When you hover your mouse over your footage, now you're gonna see this target pop up. Find a point where it looks like it's lying on the ground and create a new solid and a camera right there to test out the tracking. Watch through your timeline. If the tracking on that solid looks good, go ahead. It does and look good. It does, yeah. Delete that and delete your camera. Select some tracking points on the ground and set a target that looks like it is flat on the ground plane. Select your 3D camera tracker and set ground plane and origin. Select all the tracking points that are visible on the last frame and use those to create some null objects and a camera and then move back to the first frame and select some different points which weren't visible on that last frame. Use those to create some more nulls. So now you've got a lot of nulls to represent your scene. A lot. We have a lot of nulls here. A lot of nulls. Hey. Go to File Export Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. Save your C4D Lite file and name it. Import that Cinema 4D file you just created into After Effects. Yeah. Yep. Select all your nulls, enable the shy switch, and check the shy switch on your comp settings as well to hide all those layers with the shy switch enabled. You could just delete them, but we like to keep them around in case we want to reference them later. However, this might slow down your project a little bit. Be aware of that. Yep. Drag your C4D layer into your comp. With the C4D layer selected, go to Edit, Edit, Original, and that's gonna launch C4D Lite. Here we can see all our nulls in 3D space. Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> if we play it out, we're gonna see our camera moving as well. That's neat. That is cool. Let's do a quick test by making a new plane for the ground. Increase the scale of that plane by hitting T and holding down Shift and then clicking and dragging up. <laughs> Save it. <Dragon. laughs> 
let's save it and see how that track works in After Effects. Pretty good, pretty good. As long as it's close, we should be all set. Our match move doesn't need to be perfect for this effect, so some minor sliding is acceptable. Yeah. No one's gonna know except you, me, and uh, actually not me, just you really. Uncheck the shy switch on your comp settings. We find it easier to select the null by locking all your background and camera layers. That way just the nulls are selectable. Find a null that is a good reference for us to start building geometry off of. I like this one. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, perfect. So let's go ahead and start building off the doorway from here. First, we need to go into cinema and find that same null. There it is. Jump out of camera view by clicking that little square by the camera. We'll start creating our geometry with a simple cube. Drop that cube under the null we chose before. Use S on your keyboard to center that cube to your screen. Make the cube edible by hitting C. <laughs> edible? Yeah. How are you, you going to gonna eat it? You're going to yeah. eat the cube? Um, I'm putting some ketchup on it. All right, respect. Yeah, I'm putting some sardines. Some ketchup and sardines on a cube. Oh, oh man, yeah. That sounds awesome. Some sprinkles. I think we have a new business. Yeah. <laughs> some whipped cream. Just make it edible. All you got to do is hit C and then add C, <laughs> C for condiments. <laughs> Actually, I, I misspoke. <laughs> Believe it or not, I meant to say editable. Use the axis center tool to move the axis or the anchor point to the corner. This is going to make it more easy for us to adjust and make it so that the front face of the cube lines up with the front face of our door. We can subdivide it later if we want some more lines in the scan. Reset the position of the cube under coordinates. You're going to hit zero for each of these. The cube is then going to jump to the position of your null object. Jump back into the camera view. Whoop, whoop. Save this file in Cinema 4D and head back over to After Effects to test out the tracking. There's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth, guys. Yeah, make jump sure back. to save every time you jump from C4D Lite into After Effects and that way it's going to refresh. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump back into Cinema 4D so we can make some adjustments as we go. It doesn't need to be pixel perfect. Close enough is close enough. In the end, we're going to have something that looks like this. Oh, cool, 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 cool. If you want a reference video in Cinema 4D itself, create a new material. Add your background video. This is going to need to be an H.264 for this to work. Add that into the color settings. Make sure the editor is set to animated preview. Add a new background and drag that texture onto it. We can disable that by making these two dots here red. We prefer to test it out in After Effects since it updates fairly quickly and there are no inconsistencies. For some reason, the frames don't seem to match up perfectly when you import a background video this way into Cinema 4D Lite. But you know what? It can still be helpful as a reference. Continue to add in geometry while also checking to make sure it all looks good. If it doesn't look good, why are we here, guys? We used mostly Q Cubes, nice primitive shapes like this are going to save you a ton of time. Keep that in mind while shooting. Drop down the opacity on your Cinema 4D light layer to see the original footage while you're in After Effects. This helps to match up the lines. Useful shortcut keys while setting up 3D scene in Cinema 4D light are R for rotate, T for scale, 9 for position, and C to make edible. Edible? How do you do that with chocolate sauce? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big cheese fan. Chocolate cheese? You're crazy. This is a what our final geometry looks like. You can go as complex or as simple as you want. We are adding the effect to an entire scene, but you also could have just done one object. After tracking and geometry look pretty good, pretty we good. can start adding some materials. Create a new material, disable everything except the color. In the texture, add an effect proximal, and in here, drag all of your objects into the shader panel. Check the use edges and set the end distance to something really small we chose 2%. Select the assignment field in your material editor and drag all your objects into that and now that new material is on all your objects. This is going to give them a wireframe look when we add a light. How do we do that Adrian? You just do it man. You got to create a new spotlight and place it into your scene. This will be used to make the edges glow. <laughs> Set up your light roughly where you want the 3D scanner effect to originate. You can change the angle of your spotlight in the details tab. Let's go ahead and save here so we can jump back into After Effects and see how it's working. You should see some edges of whatever your geometry is now. You can increase your spotlight intensity in Cinema 4D Lite to make them a bit stronger. In After Effects, change your blending mode to add or screen on your Cinema 4D Lite layer and we can see it's 
it's working. Rendering will start to slow down here significantly. Chris, you okay? Yeah, 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 sorry about that. We want to drop our preview resolution to try and lock down our animation. Well, that was weird. That was weird. You slowed down significantly. <laughs> Animate your spotlight with some keyframes. Jump back and forth between After Effects again and again and again and again to see how your animation looks. We were a little bit loosey-goosey with this, but we tried to mostly match the alien's little finger motions. Yep. You can set a keyframe by clicking the little key icon down here at the bottom right. Right next to it is the auto key function, but we're going to do it manually so we don't accidentally make any keyframes that we don't actually want. That would be a disaster. Let's enable the background video for reference again. To stay organized, we can drop all our objects into a null, select them all, and hit Alt G. Now we can disable the visibility of all our objects really quickly and just focus on the background and our light. The hotkey Shift F takes us to the first frame. Let's select the spotlight on this frame and start keyframing it with rotation and maybe some position. Again, that's hotkeys R and 9. Uh, after setting up a rough animation, let's check it out in After Effects. Remember to save in Cinema 4D to see the updated version. Hey, wait a minute. It's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm digging it. Back in C4D Lite, make keyframes easy is by going to Window Timeline Dope Sheet. What's Dope Sheet mean? I don't know. Look it up. Nah. <laughs> select, <laughs> select the light. <laughs> and select the Easy Ease Curve, the one that looks like an S right here. Sounds good. Back in After Effects, if we were happy with our animation. Yeah, Chris. that looks awesome! Woo! All right, good, I guess we are. Let's go ahead and isolate it and render it out to a video as we are done with Cinema 4D Lite and we don't want that 3D slowing us down anymore. We're not gonna take it anymore. That's right, stand up for yourself. This export might take a while, so now I think might be a great time to go check out what's new on Production Crate. Hey, dude, look at this. That's nice, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, look at this. It's really, oh, actually really cool. Yeah, I could use that. Cool. Actually, I, I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but it's there, and that is nice to know. What a wonderful website. What a wonderful website. Absolutely if, lovely. If only I could subscribe to this somehow. Delightful experience. Actually, right here, if you click that. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, cool. Yeah. Import that isolated video file, disable the C4D layer to speed up your workflow, and now we're cruising again, maybe too fast. Add some fast <laughs> box blur to soften up just a touch. You can stylize the grid however you want, but we used a tint, a glow, and a curse to get the desired look. Slow me down, Adrian. How about Okay, we're good. <laughs> You're weird today. D -d 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 Duplicate that layer. We are going to use this to make some cool laser projection laser beams. Yep. Remove all the effects from this duplicate so that we may add some more. Yeah, actually, we're going to add a CC light burst and set the ray length into the negative. Wait, we you can do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We can crank up the intensity as well. Go ahead, crank it up. Dude, that is a hot tip. Looking cool. That's really, really clever. You can actually duplicate that effect as well, which will bring the rays even closer to the hand. We then created a duplicate of that layer and we changed the settings around a little bit again. Uh, just do this to your taste, guys. Head back to the first frame and make a new null object. Hit P on the keyboard to call the position property and click the stopwatch to keyframe the position. We manually track the null every free free thing. <laughs> yeah, let's all make fun of Adrian. Yeah! We manually tracked the null every three frames on on the finger. We then alt clicked the stopwatch on the center point of the light burst effect and parented that to the position of the null. Do this for both light burst layers. Precompose the light ray layers and the tracking null all together. Let's change the blend mode to screen. Color correct your light burst. We use mostly levels and some glow. Adjust your colors and light bursts until they look great. Do you mean great? Nope. <laughs> Alright, so uh, the next thing we did is we painstakingly rotoscoped out this alien frame. No. No, no, frame. no, 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 we didn't. What? Yeah, no, we, we finally didn't do that. Well, what, what did we do? We I... used a green screen. <laughs> finally, oh. we planned ahead, we got a right. green plate, and it actually... Wait, hold up. I'm looking at this now, and I'm not seeing any green. Well, now I'm confused. Oh, here, here's a plan, here's a plan, here's a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's use the dark clothes of our alien friend. May he rest in peace. We're going to use the curves to crush the blacks on that so that we can create a Luma mat. Ah, oh, smart. I think this will save us a bunch of time. And you know what? That's pretty much it. Uh, unless we want to add an atmosphere effect to our light. Do you think we should? Uh, Might as well. How, how, how do we? How, yeah, let's do it. All right. Um, you know, this kind of impromptu, but if I were going to do that, I would go on footage crate. I would find some atmosphere effects and I would download them. Let's start. 
I would track them into my scene and I would use the layer as a Luma mat. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna give this project file away to everybody so you can dig through it and see how he made stuff. If you want to download the project file and just dig through it yourself, go for it. It's in the description as long as we remembered to do that. <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks. Yeah, Why hey. don't you guys, just, just our special friends at the end of the video, leave a comment telling us the reason for the last time After Effects crashed on you. Yep, wrong answers only, please. Wrong answers only, please. Time to bust out those lies. <laughs> Oh, my God.